Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today by popular request, I'm here to share 10 top Cydia tweaks with you guys for the iOS 9 Pangu jailbreak that will function on up to iOS 9.0.2, pre-iOS 9.1, and 9.2. All right, so to get started here, if you guys want a chance to win a brand new fourth gen Apple TV, just be sure to rate this video up and stick around to the end for complete instructions. Now, with that said, obviously you're going to need to be jailbroken to install any of the tweaks I'm going to highlight in today's video. If you have yet to jailbreak and you're on 9.0.2 or lower, you can still do so successfully utilizing the latest Pangu jailbreak. I will have it linked for you guys directly on your screens now. However, if you're on iOS 9.1 or 9.2, unfortunately you won't be able to install today's tweaks. However, once the next untethered jailbreak is released, you will be able to because they will function successfully on 9.1 and 9.2. Again, when the next untethered utility is available, I will have my latest updates linked for you guys on your screens now too, if you want additional information on some of the latest updates in the realm of jailbreaking. Also, one last thing before we get started, I will have one link down below in the more info to a post on my website that will contain a written list of all of the tweaks I'm about to highlight as well as every compatible iOS 9.0.2 Cydia tweak. So with that said, let's delve into today's list. Up first, we have Flux. No, just kidding. We have Springtimize 3. So for those of you who don't know, Springtimize is a world-renowned tweak. It was recently updated just a few days ago to include support for iOS 9. So now you can fully utilize Springtimize 3 on your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch running iOS 9 through up to 9.0.2. So for those of you who don't know, Springtimize 3 is unfortunately a paid tweak, which means you will have to purchase it inside of Cydia from the default Big Boss repository. But luckily, its functionality is absolutely awesome, so you get fine control over a number of different aspects of your device's UI. So as you can see here, inside of the main settings screen for Spring to My 3, again, just inside of the settings application, we do have control over animations, the app slider, control center dock, folders, icons, lock screen, notification center pages, as well as the status bar. And you may be asking, well, what can you do? The great thing about Spring to My 3 is that each of those sections have a number of different options. We're not going to go into all of them, but but for example, inside of animations there, you can control the animation speed, so you can speed it up if you want, because of course the default iOS 9 animation speed is rather slow. So this is a great way to improve that and to kind of just give your device the illusion of being faster. Getting a close up, you can also make changes to the app slider. For example, you could hide the icons if you wanted to. So when you're inside of the multitasking interface, you no longer see the icons at the top there. Again, guys, there are just so many options for Spring to my 3. I don't have time to cover all of them in today's video because it's simply a top tweaks list, but what I showed you guys right before mentioning Spring to my 3 was Control Center. So that effect is fully achievable inside of the Control Center portion of the Spring to my 3 settings pane there. Moving on to the second tweak in today's list though, it's free. It's called COG, which stands for coming or going. It's an acronym. So when you install it, you don't really have any settings. You can just open up the default messages app and you should see it automatically applied. So inside of the default messages app here, you'll notice for the top conversation, we do have an arrow suggesting this was an outgoing message. And right below that for the next thread, we have another arrow, which is kind of reverse that suggests this is an incoming message. So COG is a really great tool for keeping track of who sent the last message without actually navigating into the thread itself. Next up, we have better five icon dock. As you can see here, I do have five icons in my dock, four is the default for iPhones, and how we're able to do this is by installing, again, Better 5 Icon Dock from a custom repository. So all you're going to have to do is launch up Cydia and then go to the Sources tab down below at the bottom there, tap on Edit in the top right-hand corner, followed by Add in the top left-hand corner, and you're going to enter the following repository inside of this URL field here. It's just repo.rpdev.info. Again, it should be on your screens now, and I'll also have it in the post that's down below in the more info. Once you add said repository, all you have to do is just tap into it, followed by tweaks, and then you can install Better 5 Icon Dock or really any of the other tweaks that are actually featured here. All of them are great. 
Now for the fourth one, we have a tweak called Berry C8, which is actually pretty cool. Essentially, it allows you to add these application shortcuts on your lock screen here. So it actually unlocked too quickly, but as you'll notice, we do have a few different applications down below here at the bottom. And what we can do is actually tap on one of these applications and kind of drag it toward the bottom and then just place our finger on the Touch ID sensor and it will immediately open to set application. So what I'm going to do is actually just go to the home screen here and you'll notice that when I do lock it and then unlock it, again, it just goes to the home screen. So Cydia was not the last opened application. Again, we were just on the home screen, so that's where it should unlock to, right? Well, now what we're going to do is just pull down on Cydia and you will notice that again, Cydia does open this time. And this does work on non-Touch ID devices. However, it's not nearly as cool because you do have to enter your passcode if you have one set. However, if you don't, then it should just open straight to it. So we're actually just going to demo another one here. This is just the August lock application. So you can see that it does open that app as well when we drag it to the bottom. And of course, the settings for Barry C8 are fully customizable inside of the default settings app there. Next, for those of you who don't want to spend the money on Spring to My 3, but you still want the faster app opening and closing animations, you can actually install something called No Slow Animations. It is available for free, and all you have to do is just enable it and then set your speed here. Once you do set your speed, just respring, and then it should instantly apply. So as you can see, all of the application animations are significantly faster. That is because we have them set via Spring to My 3, but No Slow Animations will still do the trick. Next, we have NC If Needed, which is a pretty cool one. So I'm going to pull down on Notification Center here, and you notice that because I don't have any unread notifications, it just opened to the Today view, which is where my widgets are. So again, let's go ahead and try that. We're actually going to set it to notifications, and you'd think that it would open just right up to notifications, right? Well, when we pull down, you can see it opens to that Today view. However, when we do have an unread notification, it will open to the notifications view. So let's go ahead and test that quickly. All right, so I did send myself a notification and pulling down here, now it opens inside of the notifications view. And of course, when we do exit out of said notification and pull down again, it will just return to the Today view. Moving on to the seventh tweak, we have Icon Renamer, which as the name would suggest, allows you to easily and quickly rename your icons. All you have to do is just tap and hold to get them into that wiggle mode, and then boom, there you go. You can see that we do have the icon renamer option pop up when we actually tap on an icon inside of the wiggle mode here. So now it's asking me to rename activity. We can go ahead and just name it something else. Let's just go ahead and call it useless just for the sake of this video, and then tap on apply. As you can see, it does set that in real time. And for another quick demo, it doesn't just have to be a stock application. You can actually rename third-party apps. So for example, let's just go ahead and tap on Twitter inside of that wiggle mode, and we can actually just set an emoji. So as you can see, we now have an emoji set instead of a name for the Twitter application there. Next up, we have a really cool tweak called Locus. So if you ever been inside of an application's privacy settings for location services, and you just have always or never, but you don't want the app application to constantly access your location data, well then Locus is the tweak for you. As you can see just inside of the default settings pane for the tweak here, once we have it enabled, then we can set specific applications that we want to actually access our location. And when we're opening and using those applications, it does use location services. However, when those applications aren't open, it doesn't matter whether they're being accessed in the background or not. When they're not in the foreground, meaning you're not actually on that application, then location services is completely disabled. But we do have a few different conditions at the bottom here that will essentially enable location services for these few options. So you can see when notification center is open, when the device is locked, and when Siri is activated. That way you can still use Siri when you're trying to access location data or when your device is locked and maybe you happen to lose it. That way you can access it via the Find My iPhone feature. But again, for the whitelist applications here, what you have to do is just tap into it and then say you want calendar and camera to access your location data when you have those applications open. All you have to do is toggle them and then that's it. When they're open and in the foreground, they will collect your location data. When you actually press the home button to exit out of them, not even exiting inside of the multitasking view, 
they no longer need to use that data. Next is a pretty cool tweak called Appendix. It is exclusive to the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, unfortunately. So for folders, instead of having to tap into them to see and open the first four applications, all you have to do is push harder on the folder. And as you can see, here are the top four applications that are found inside of said folder. So the first four. And again, you can access them just by pushing harder and then sliding down just like you can with regular 3D touch features and then just releasing on that application. You can see now it's opening up Asphalt 8. We can actually just close out of that and I'll give you another quick example with Goat Simulator. So now it's opening up Goat Simulator just with that convenient and simple 3D touch with Appendix installed. And last but not least, we have a tweak called Musais, which is a free tweak. And essentially what it does is it allows more control over the default music application for devices on iOS 8.4 and up. It's specifically designed for those of you who don't want to pay for Apple Music. As you can see for its features, it states that it hides the connect tab, hides the arrow on album art while playing. So you can just swipe backwards. It kind of streamlines the look of it. Here's the big one. It allows for unlimited radio skipping. So that's great for those of you who don't pay for Apple Music. Music. And it has a couple of other different options. Again, it is great for those of you who don't have Apple Music. So guys, that wraps up today's list. I really do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And also let me know if you guys want to see more videos where I cover Top City tweaks. And if you want to win a free fourth gen Apple TV, just navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of Mobile Safari and sign up. Once you do download one or more of the sponsored apps you see in the main section, just just so long as you do earn points, then go to the third tab at the bottom and you see that referral link. Take what appears after the equals symbol and post it in the comment section of my fourth gen Apple TV unboxing, which I will have linked for you guys if you're on the desktop version of YouTube. And if you want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos similar to this one or even related to brand new Apple products like the Apple Pencil and iPad Pro, just be sure to click the subscribe button below next to my channel name if you have yet to. Also like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.